In this video, I'm going to be talking about one major thing that I'd love to be added into Premiere Pro by 2024 to take it from here and bring it to here. I don't care what people are saying these days. Premiere Pro is still my go to video editing software. Both you and I know, though, that Premiere Pro is not perfect. It needs a continued update as all things do. If I was the king of Adobe, the one thing that I would implement is something called auto color. We all know that DaVinci Resolve absolutely owns the color space. If Adobe wants to take back the color correction and the color grading space, it's gonna have to do something drastic and completely revolutionary with this idea that I have called auto color. Guys, imagine using the sheer power of this emerging AI technology to completely automate the usual color workflow. I'm not talking about just slightly revamping the color matching feature in the Lumici color panel, which kind of sucks at the moment, by the way. I'm talking about completely replacing the Lumici color panel with a set of buttons that literally with just one click completely automates the core aspects of color correction. You guys aren't ready for this. The first button is something that I'd call the bit depth deepener. What it would do is it would somehow use current generative AI technology to increase the bit depth of all of the clips in the timeline. This would easily allow you to convert, say, 8-bit 420 footage into rich 10-bit 422 footage. Now, suggesting this in a YouTube video just a year ago would have gotten me completely laughed off of the platform. But I believe the AI will make this a reality sooner than you think. Now, increasing the bit depth in a clip before starting the actual coloring process would add a significant amount of flexibility to any incoming color adjustments that are planned with the footage. Quick story. My first music video I ever shot and edited was for this upcoming Nigerian artist a very, very long time ago. There was almost no budget and I had close to no experience. I didn't really know how to light that well or properly expose footage and I decided to drown the entire set with this thick fog because that's what I saw other directors do. Oh, I forgot to mention, I was using a really cheap amateur DSLR called the Canon T2i Rebel. It was an entry level video DSLR with horrible compression and a low quality 8-bit 420 video output. This basically put me in a place where I ended up with poorly shot, soft, low bit depth footage with absolutely no flexibility for me to tweak in post. And I, in my opinion, delivered a subpar product. A bit depth deepener button would have saved my butt like crazy in that situation. The next auto button planned would be called the denoiser button. I'm talking about a button that takes footage shot at say 10,000 ISO on your camera and makes it look completely pristine. Current generative AI technology has the ability to do things very close to this. And it's really time for Adobe to come and just begin to close that gap. New story. Growing up in LA and as a 32 year old, I lived most of my life in an age when video DSLRs just didn't exist. Let alone video DSLRs that were actually good in low light. Sony DSLRs didn't really exist at that point. That is to say, I lived most of my life with most of my indoor shots looking a lot noisier than I'd prefer. And even now, even though low light tech in a lot of cameras are a lot more oppressive than it used to be, you still even have an issue with most reds, in my opinion, in most dark environments. That is to say that a solution in post is needed, has been needed like yesterday. The next one click button would be called the white balance button. Now, a lot of you guys that have done color correction, say in the Lumichi color panel may say, hey, that button already exists. Well, yes, it technically does, but I'm proposing a button that actually works. I literally want a white balance button that is so smart that it's able to take footage and completely fix it in one second with one click, just like that. Another quick story when I was an amateur video enthusiast many, many years ago, again, the only camera I had accessible to me was again, my cheap Canon T2i Rebel video DSLR. And I was given this really cool opportunity to shoot this Maserati out of this local dealership out in Orange County, California. It was such a shame. I literally found myself as an amateur videographer getting this big break, getting to shoot this $100,000 plus dollar car, and I was using the absolute worst camera possible. And the funny thing is the footage quality ended up coming out so bad because I just completely screwed up on the white balancing. There was absolutely no post solution for me because God knows Premiere Pro didn't help. So what was my solution to solve all of this weirdly colored, unwhite balanced footage? Well, I had to just bring all the footage to black and white as an artistic choice to hide all the color imperfections. And boy, was I not a happy camper. The next button would be called auto balance. It would use the auto bit depth, the auto denoising, the auto white balance, and so, so much more to perfectly, and I mean perfectly, 
fix any imperfections in any piece of footage. This button would absolutely change the post-production world like no other. Think about the sheer amount of time that would be saved. I remember about seven years ago, I was early in my post-production career trying to learn the ropes out in Los Angeles. Yep, that's your boy Chris Brown. Let's say we were working on a music video. The label would then come to us with a VFX change request. The thing that really sucked is this request would come after we had already gotten the clip back from color. If you guys may not know the order of operations in post is you edit it, you do the VFX, and then finally you color it at the very end. This means that we then have to revert to the pre-colored raw footage to make the VFX correction, and then we'd have to send that same clip back to color to get it recolored. This recoloring process was so annoying because at times it took a full hour or two. I remember thinking back at the time, wouldn't it be amazing if there was a way we could completely avoid having to go through this color process? What if there was a way that we could recolor in like two seconds with maybe a click of a button right inside a Premiere after we've finally gotten done with all of our visual effects and after effects? An auto balance button at the time would have literally saved us thousands of dollars and hours of time in the post process and it's something that I wish would have existed. For the next button, we're going to tackle color matching. A button that not only matches the shadows and the midtones and the highlights of the two clips, but also matches the average contrast amount, the saturation, the white balance, the exposure, the sharpness. Imagine shooting an event on like three different cameras and being able to match all those cameras perfectly in two seconds. After discussing all of these color features, let me share with you a personal experience. Last year, I had the incredible opportunity to shoot a gorgeous looking music video in this rather strange dark alley. I only had 30 minutes to shoot this by the way. With my old Sony 6400 camera and Insta360 camera hoisted by the way on this three meter pole, I managed to capture a variety of dynamic shots from close-ups to full aerials. Using two distinct cameras however came with some challenges. I simply could not color any of this footage in Premiere Pro. The color matching was just completely impossible. So I had to resort to using DaVinci Resolve, which admittedly worked really well. Premiere, please fix automated color matching. Like, let's just start with this. It would change the world. It would change so many lives. I don't wanna use DaVinci Resolve for color. I do it only because I'm forced to, and admittedly, they do a really good job at what they do. To end this story on a high note, while I was still working within Premiere Pro and just before transitioning to DaVinci Resolve for the final color grade stage, I incorporated into my project my new effects pack called ePRISM. This pack allowed me to infuse some impressive visual effects into my music video. ePRISM is basically a groundbreaking tool that offers really cool looking digital lens distortion effects designed exclusively for use within Premiere Pro. They emulate various high quality refractive prism lens filters. Now the cool thing is ePRISM is just one of 20 even more incredible effects packs that you can get in our new 20 pack bundle available in the description below for only $59. Our team has literally spent thousands of hours to create these packs for you. They're usually valued at over $700 and now you can get them all for a single price of only $59. This is literally the craziest sale that I've ever done. Returning to our Adobe 2024 wishlist, there's more that I wanna see. I wanna do more videos on more potential features in Premiere Pro 2024, like AI-driven automated voice mastering and background noise elimination, enhanced transcribing and captions, surpassing even descripts capabilities. Here's where it gets really interesting. I wanna do a video about voice-based video editing. Lastly, I also wanna do a video about the previously elusive, comprehensive auto editor software. Here, this is software that I predict is coming soon that's gonna be a comprehensive, complete editing setup where you won't have to even think, everything is gonna be done automatically. What are your thoughts on these proposed AI enhanced auto features in this video? Could they propel Adobe back to the forefront in the color grading arena? Also, it's important to note that I would expect traditional tools like color wheels, curves, and scopes to still remain at your disposal in the new Premiere Pro. The goal, however, is that these new auto buttons would be so powerful and useful that they would become the only things that you would need to touch in your color workflow. The future is bright, fam.